Hey everyone, and welcome to Mini Mod Reviews, where today's featured mod is Map Atlas. Normally, I recommend Zero's mini map and world map for modded playthroughs, but if you're looking for a more vanilla experience with maps, Map Atlas is the perfect mod for you. The mod introduces an all new item, the Atlas, which in order for you to track where you've been, actually requires you to craft new maps that can be held within it. Looking at the top of your screen, you'll now see a mini-map that shows you the current map that you're in, if it's been recorded by the Atlas, and actually opening up the Atlas will show you everywhere that's been recorded. While the Atlas does work in every dimension, it's highly recommended to use supplementaries alongside it for slice maps, which actually make maps in the nether work properly. Hey everyone, and welcome to Mini Mod Reviews, where today's featured mod is the Gems Project. Minecraft's ore progression has always felt like something was missing, so the Gems Project is here to fill out the game's progression in a meaningful way. Rather than messing with the current early game progression, the mod introduces three post-netherite ores, being Topaz, Sapphire, and Ruby, with each possessing its own special perk to make it worth the upgrade. On top of this, the mod introduces all new types of bows, crossbows, shields, horse armor, and jewelry, which actually gives you different effects based on which one you have. The crowning jewel of the mod, though, is Dragonix, the ultimate tool and armor upgrade that gives all of the benefits of the three other added ores, along with some special ones, including Lifesteal. Hey everyone, and welcome to Mini Mod Reviews, where today's featured mod is Iron Spells and Spellbooks. After having tested this mod out, I can safely say that Iron Spells and Spellbooks is one of the most intricate, best looking magic mods I have ever tried out. To begin, simply make yourself a scroll forge, which allows you to start making the spell scrolls found within the mod. Unfortunately, these are only single use, so the mod also introduces different spell books that you can put into an inscription table to store your spells in, making them reusable. The mod comes with dozens of spells, each being insanely unique not only with what they do, but visually as well. The mod also offers rings that have different benefits towards mana consumption and spells, some new weapons, and tons of new armor sets that each offer different benefits towards different spell types. Hey everyone, and welcome to Mini Mod Reviews, where today's featured mod is Reusable Rockets. One of the most annoying things is flying through your world with Elytra when all of a sudden, you run out of rockets. With reusable rockets installed, this is no longer an issue. The mod introduces the reusable rocket, a special type of firework that has durability and can be repaired using gunpowder. There are three tiers to these rockets, with each having more durability than the last, and on top of this, the higher tier rockets can even have an extended flight time going all the way up to double the vanilla cap with a flight time of six. Hey everyone, and welcome to Mini Mod Reviews, where today's featured mod is Heartseeker. Minecraft's default health system is very static. You start a world with the same exact amount of health as you end it with, so Heartseeker comes in to introduce some extra added challenge. When starting a world, you're only given three hearts, making the early game very challenging. To raise your health, you will now be able to find life crystals in structures throughout your world, each raising your health by one heart. By default, the mod also lets you raise your health up to 20 hearts rather than 10, this way adding even more variety from the vanilla game. Hey everyone, and welcome to Mini Mod Reviews, where today's featured mod is Visuality. When it comes to extra little visuals in Minecraft, well, there aren't really that many. So, Visuality is here to introduce a handful of small but cool visual tweaks. There's two sides to this mod, effects added to mobs and effects added to the world. For mobs, as a slime lands from a jump, it will leave behind some goo, and now when you hit a skeleton, some bones will appear to fall off of it. When it comes to the world, some of my favorite added effects are the glistening particles on amethyst crystals, souls escaping as you jump on soul sand, and in my opinion, the best visual addition, water droplet ripples on the surface of the water when it rains. 
Hey everyone, and welcome to Mini Mod Reviews, where today's featured mod is Advanced Shulker Boxes. Shulker Boxes are one of the best blocks in Minecraft, but having to place them down every time you want to use them can get a little annoying, so Advanced Shulker Boxes is here to fix that. While you can still place down Shulker Boxes by crouching, the main feature of the mod is the fact that now you can open a Shulker Box by simply right-clicking it. Although this feature is small, this is something that I have believed should already be in the vanilla game, so seeing it get added, even through mods, is amazing. Hey everyone, and welcome to Mini Mod Reviews, where today's featured mod is Seafoam's Diable Blocks. If you like making pixel art in Minecraft, Seafoam's Diable Blocks is the perfect mod for you. The mod introduces a paintbrush that can be dyed using dyes, and doesn't actually limit you to Minecraft's 16 colors, letting you combine multiple to create new colors. While the best for dyeing is concrete, the mod also does allow you to dye wool, bricks, terracotta, planks, stripped wood, glass, and glowstone as well, giving you new opportunities to add more vibrant colors to your builds. Hey everyone, and welcome to Mini Mod Reviews, where today's featured mod is Bear's Building Blocks. Over the years, Minecraft's building blocks have gotten way more diverse, but like most areas of the game, there's always room to improve, so Bear's Building Blocks is here to help. The mod introduces a bunch of vanilla block variants to help bring some parity with things already in the game, including stairs and slabs for stone types that don't have them, more chiseled variants of blocks, and a few more mossy blocks. On top of this, the mod introduces some new blocks too, including empty bookshelves, new flowers in the overworld and nether, barricades, tiles, and my personal favorite, all new types of walls, including wooden walls. Hey everyone, and welcome to Mini Mod Reviews, where today's featured mod is Pandora's Box. I remember when I first found this mod years ago, and absolutely loved it, so the fact that it's been ported to the newer versions of the games makes me so happy. The mod introduces an all-new item, the Pandora's Box, which cannot be found naturally generated, rather has to be crafted. Similar to Lucky Blocks, opening up a Pandora's Box has the possibility for dozens of unique, crazy events to happen. These range from some basic things like getting some blocks, a chest appearing, and mobs spawning in, all the way to some insane world generation stuff that, for lack of a better word, will absolutely f*** up your world. Hey everyone, and welcome to Mini Mod Reviews, where today's featured mod is the Undergarden. The idea of a new dimension in Minecraft is something that's been talked about for years, and I think that the Undergarden is a great example of what that could look like. To enter the dimension, you first need to create a catalyst, which can be used to activate a portal made out of stone bricks. Upon entering the dimension, you'll be introduced to a dark world deep below the bedrock, teeming with life. There's 15 new biomes to explore, including places like the Vale Mushroom Bog and the Grongle Growth, an all-new structure to conquer, the Catacombs, over 10 new mobs, new ores with armor and tools to go along with them, and dozens upon dozens of new new building blocks. Hey everyone, and welcome to Mini Mod Reviews, where today's featured mod is Sonance. Sonance is a sound overhaul mod that, rather than focusing on the sounds of the world, focuses on the sounds of the player interacting with things. Rather than trying to explain everything, I'll just be quiet and show you all these amazing new sound effects. Hey everyone, and welcome to Mini Mod Reviews, where today's featured mod is Wakes. Water in Minecraft, besides the sound it makes when you jump in, has essentially no interactability, so Wakes is here to change that. 
The mod makes it so that now, if an entity is moving fast enough in water, real-time simulated wakes will appear behind them as they move. This doesn't add any actual gameplay value, but I think these wakes look so good and fit so well within the game that they deserved a video all of their own. Hey everyone, and welcome to Mini Mod Reviews, where today's featured mod is Lava Matron. Collecting lava is a very frustrating process, and if you use the nether as your source, the lakes look all weird after you're done. So, Lava Matron is here to fix that. Introducing an all new furnace type block, the Lava Matron, the mod allows you to essentially melt down cobblestone into a bucket to create lava. If you don't have a bucket available, the lava will turn into a thermal shard, which essentially acts the same as a bucket of lava, only without taking up a bunch of space in your inventory. Hey everyone, and welcome to Mini Mod Reviews, where today's featured mod is Spawn. From the creator of Enderscape comes an all-new Vanilla Plus mod that aims to add more animals into the game, each coming with their own unique features. As of now, the mod introduces six new mobs into the game, including tuna, which can be used to craft a tuna fish sandwich, hamsters that, once tamed, allow you to use their cheeks as portable storage, and what I think is the current best mob, the ant. Coming with its own new biome, ants are cute little mobs that live inside of ant hills, the ultimate accumulation of this being the ant mound, a mini dungeon where you can find ant larvae. Growing these larvae can allow you to get tamed ants, which act like wolves in the way that they will defend you when getting attacked. Hey everyone, and welcome to Mini Mod Reviews, where today's featured mod is Horse Expert. Horses are a great way to navigate the overworld, but breeding the perfect horse can be a pretty difficult guessing game, so Horse Expert is here to make it a little bit easier. The mod introduces an all-new item, the Monocle, an item designed to help you pick and choose the perfect horses. When wearing it and looking at a tamed horse, a few stats will now be shown, including health, speed, and jump height, allowing you to pick and choose which horses to selectively breed to make the perfect companion. Hey everyone and welcome to Mini Mod Reviews, where today's featured mod is The Lost Cities. World generation mods can be very cool, but most of them attempt to go for some kind of vanilla feel. With The Lost Cities, this goes in the complete opposite direction. The mod introduces a new world type, the Lost Cities, which makes the world be covered in massive, abandoned metropolitan cities with huge buildings, highways, bridges, and even a subway system. Within these cities are also tons of different loot chests and spawners scattered around, with some of the loot, from what I've seen in my testing, actually being really good. Hey everyone, and welcome to Mini Mod Reviews, where today's featured mod is Tameable Beasts. Of the tameable creatures currently in Minecraft, the only one that is somewhat useful is the dog, so Tameable Beast aims to bring new life to the overlooked mechanic. The mod introduces nine new tameable creatures to be found around your world, most having their own special mechanics. Some of these include penguins that can be given an ice pop sword and fight alongside you, giant grasshoppers that you can ride around on, scarecrows that can help you in a fight, giant roly polies that can be ridden around, and many more. Hey everyone, and welcome to Mini Mod Reviews, where today's featured mod is Geophilic. Geophilic is a world generation mod that aims to bring more diversity to the vanilla biomes in the game, adding more little details to each biome's generation. The mod currently improves over 20 of the game's biomes, and rather than talk about them all, I'm just going to sit back and let you all take a look at these amazing new additions. Hey everyone, and welcome to Mini Mod Reviews, where today's featured mod is... When enchanting and upgrading a weapon, while you can technically see the base damage it will do in the item tooltip, this might not be a fully accurate representation of the amount of damage you can possibly do, so... Is here to fix that. 
the mod introduces an all new entity, the target dummy, which when hit will visually show how much damage you do to it. On top of this, you can also put armor on the dummy to see how this will affect your DPS, letting you view the full range of possibilities when it comes to damaging enemies. Hey everyone, and welcome to Mini Mod Reviews, where today's featured mod is Extra Alchemy. Minecraft comes with a pretty wide range of potion effects for the player to use, but after having played the game for years, they can feel a bit repetitive, so Extra Alchemy introduces some all new variety to spice things up. The mod introduces 20 new potion effects to the game, including things like Magnetism, Returning, which takes you back to your spawn point, Detection, which reveals mobs in the area nearby, and Sailing, which increases your speed when in a boat. On top of this, the mod also introduces Potion Rings, which act as a reusable source of the potion effects at the cost of a small amount of experience rather than materials. Hey everyone, and welcome to Mini Mod Reviews, where today's featured mod is Mythic Charms. While we do have potions in Minecraft to give the player abilities, these are temporary and can be a bit of a hassle to get, so Mythic Charms introduces an alternate solution that's a bit more permanent. The mod introduces over 20 new ability charms to the game, which can come in two varieties, being Fragile Charms that break upon death, and the Netherite upgraded version which won't break when you die. The possible abilities that you can get include stuff like Slow Falling, Fire Resistance, Preventing Phantoms from spawning or attacking you if they're there, Magnetism, and many more. Hey everyone, and welcome to Mini Mod Reviews, where today's featured mod is Simple Planes. If you've ever wanted your own personal aircraft in Minecraft, look no further than Simple Planes. Using logs and a propeller in the plane workbench, you can now make three types of aircraft, the normal plane, large plane, and helicopter, each coming in every single wood variant for the maximum amount of personalization. On top of this, you can add accessories including extra seats, armor for increased protection, and a working cannon. To actually make the aircraft go, you'll need to add an engine, and once powered, you can use WASD and the arrow keys to maneuver your aircraft around your world. Hey everyone, and welcome to Mini Mod Reviews, where today's featured mod is Gateway to Eternity. When it comes to challenges in Minecraft, the first thing that probably comes to your mind is the game's bosses, traversing an ancient city, or getting how did we get here, but Gateway to Eternity is here to add one of the toughest challenges yet. The mod introduces a handful of new items called Gate Pearls, each triggering a new waved event that summons tons of mobs of differing difficulties, each new wave coming with better and better loot. The most challenging of these is the Gateway of the Hellish Fortress, a nether fortress themed gateway that summons zombified piglins, wither skeletons, blazes, and a final boss being a super buffed piglin brute, with the rewards including things like tons of gold, wither skeleton skulls, and even a Wither Skeleton Spawner for you to use. Hey everyone, and welcome to Mini Mod Reviews, where today's featured mod is Sanity Descent into Madness. If you want to add an extra challenge to your world while also turning Minecraft into somewhat of a horror game, then Sanity Descent into Madness is the perfect mod for you. The mod introduces a sanity meter to the game, which can easily be kept full by eating, sleeping, standing near campfires, wearing a flower crown, and many more, but you can also decrease your sanity by not eating or sleeping, getting hurt, staying in dark places for too long, and many others with a decreased sanity coming with an increased risk of death. You'll begin to hear and see things, entities that aren't really there coming into your vision. Allow your sanity to get low enough and these entities will begin to attack you, leading to your demise at the hands of your own mind. Hey everyone, and welcome to Mini Mod Reviews, where today's featured mod is Sid. When decorating your interiors, many people use stairs to simulate chairs, but unfortunately you can actually sit down in them, so Sid is here to fix that. As the name implies, the mod allows you to actually sit down on stairs, but not only this, as you can also now sit down on slabs and carpets as well. If you go into the mod's config, you can actually change this to allow you to sit down on anything, opening up countless possibilities when it comes to decorating. 
Hey everyone, and welcome to Mini Mod Reviews, where today's featured mod is Music Manager. I absolutely love Minecraft soundtrack, but there have been times where a track I like comes on and I have no idea what it's called, so I can't look it up and listen to it later. But Music Manager is here to help. When playing the game, every time a new music track comes on, a little pop-up will show up telling you what track is playing and who wrote it. On top of this, the mod adds a little menu that allows you to decrease the time between tracks, making music play more often to fill in the game's silence. Hey everyone and welcome to Mini Mod Reviews, where today's featured mod is Biome Tinted Flowers. Having the grass change colors depending on the biome you're in is a very nice touch to add more immersion to the game, but flowers unfortunately do not follow this rule. So, Biome Tinted Flowers is here to fix that. The mod makes it so that now, the green leafy parts of flowers will also be affected by the biome you're in, matching the color of the grass depending on where you are. While this change is small, it does a really good job at helping to unify all of the plant life that can be found around your Minecraft world. Hey everyone and welcome to Mini Mod Reviews, where today's featured mod is Pick Your Poison. Frogs are my personal favorite animal, and the fact that they are in Minecraft is amazing, but the variety is kind of lacking. Pick Your Poison is here to fix that. The mod introduces an all-new frog variant, the Poison Dart Frog, which is my absolute favorite type of frog and I think this rendition of them looks great. On top of this, each variant comes with its own unique toxin that all have different effects, including complete paralysis, completely disabling regeneration, and straight up killing you. The mod also adds darts that can be clicked onto each of the frogs to apply their unique toxin to it, allowing you to weaponize all of the different frog types. Hey everyone and welcome to Mini Mod Reviews, where today's featured mod is Serbon's Better Beacons. Beacons are a great endgame challenge to get, but in all honesty, the only use I've ever really had for them was getting haste too, but Serbon's Better Beacons is here to bring new life to the feature. The first addition is making copper one of the beacon's activators, as well as making it so that more rare activators give the beacon a higher range of effects. When it comes to the effects themselves, the mod introduces a new power for the first tier which gives the player an increased block placement range, adds night vision and fire resistance to the secondary powers list, and adds an all new third tier that has two new effects, patrol nullifier which prevents pillagers from spawning, and phantoms bane which prevents phantoms from spawning. 